Hey everyone, what's up? Thanks to producing a Ryzen overclocking Procast episode for MSI, we got a new Ryzen setup which we really put through its paces. And we were able to see some really awesome performance gains from AMD, but how about the build quality and performance of this motherboard? Will this be the next board for you? Let's find out. I'm Rick at Techspin and we've got exciting contests monthly now with our Drive to 5 giveaways. Be sure to connect with us on social media and get the latest reviews by clicking that subscribe button below and that bell icon with new content weekly. All right, so let's check out this board. MSI's latest MEG X570 ACE motherboard retails for between $370 to $400 US, supporting the new AMD Ryzen 3000 processors, and they're using a robust 12 plus 2 plus 1 IR digital power system for stable overclocking. The BIOS has lots of features and tweaks for full control. The ACE has three M.2 Lightning Gen 4 slots for all your ultra-fast NVMe drives, all equipped with M.2 Shield Frozer Heat Sinks. Covering the VRMs is MSI's Mystic Light Infinity design using this cool LED reflection effect. MSI's Mystic Light controls onboard headers and you can sync or light up your whole PC and compatible peripherals as you like. The four DIMM slots all have steel armor as well, supporting up to 128 gigs of DDR4 and can overclock selected RAM modules up to a theoretical 4,600 megahertz. MSI has implemented an extended heat pipe design on their higher end boards, connecting the VRM banks all the way down to the X570 Frozer heatsink. And they have some form of fan implementation across their whole lineup as that X570 chip does run a little hot. The rear panel is equipped with Wi-Fi 6, the 802.11ax spec, along with onboard 2.5 gigabit and normal gigabit LAN. And the front has four SATA 3 ports, which you can configure with Easy Raid and M2 Genie. This board has dual 8-pin ATX power connectors to provide steady power while overclocking AMD's newest Ryzen chip, and that feeds into MSI's digital power design with titanium choke twos. And perhaps most importantly, the three PCIe Gen 4 slots have steel armor reinforcement for a strong hold, important for the Beast 2070 Super and the 2080 Super cards. And the X570A supports both AMD Crossfire as well as SLI slash NVLink setups. Powering our rig is a Corsair HX850, which has good headroom for overclocking and graphics card draw. We'll show some overclocking results, and of course, overclocking needs a power supply with a solid 12 volt rail, and you'll likely need two ATX 8 pin connectors. We would like to recommend at least a solid 700 to 800 watt PSU. For the DDR4, we have 32 gigs of Corsair's Dominator Platinum RGB at 3000 megahertz. And we used an XPG8200 Pro 256GB NVMe M.2 drive. It's comparable to Samsung for performance, and it gives blazing fast boot times in Windows 10 and accelerates game loading and productivity. We've got the latest BIOS system and NVIDIA drivers installed, so let's get into some results. And at stock speeds, we're getting 3100 points in Cinebench R15, almost 1000 marks up over 9900K. Cinebench R20 is next, and scores an impressive 7,021 marks. We ran the standard Blender BMW test, which finished in two minutes, 40.9. Very nice scores at stock. For overclocking results, it's important to have very good cooling. The Ryzen 9 3900X is a 12 core, 24 thread beast, running at a base 3.8 gigahertz, turboing up to heavier single core workloads, though we never saw it hit its supposed 4.6 gigahertz frequency, more like 4.2 to 4.3. To dump all this heat, we're using a hefty Corsair H150i Pro RGB 360mm AIO liquid cooler, and we suggest using at least a 240mm radiator for long-term stable results. Before the results, a quick reminder that if you want to connect with us online, we're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Techspin Review. And there's links below if you decide to grab a new motherboard. You can support our channel by using our affiliate links to buy. It'll help us out here with no extra cost to you. Okay, so with just a quick core ratio adjust to 42 and AXMP enabled, we have fired up R15 and gained 131 points over stock at 3,231 marks. Cinebench R20, we get a hair under 400 points up, very good, with a 7,420 result. Last was Blender BMW, and we rendered out seven seconds faster at 233.43. If you have this or a similar setup, we'd like to hear your results and feedback in the comments below. 
AMD likes talking about their Infinity fabric, and here it is listed in BIOS as FCLK or f clock and it runs at half your DDR rate, so for us, it would be normally 1,500. With AXMP enabled, we could post, but with it set to 1667 megahertz, we found 1600 more stable. It does have an upper cap though, 1800 megahertz. So if you have a DDR4 or 4000 kit and overclock it to 4000, instead of 2000 for the F clock, it will still cap out at 1800. Furthermore, we could drive the CPU up to a stable 4.25 gigahertz. And to see those results, please check out MSI's Ryzen overclocking guide, and I'll throw up the link here. We also go into details like BIOS a bit more there. I'm not a pro overclocker by any means, and those of you with more experience may be able to get even better results. Overall, we were impressed by the design and build quality, and we're gonna give it a Techspin Platinum Award, as we found it very sturdy and stable in testing, and we like the VRM design, the built-in Wi-Fi 6, and especially the 2.5 gigabit LAN. Forward thinking is always appreciated. Okay, so what's the benefit of going with this $370 to $400 board rather than another less expensive X570 option? You get a board much better suited for overclocking with a more robust VRM solution, linked heat pipe cooling to keep that hot X570 under control, steel armor for all slots, and cooling plates for all NVMe spots. While market adoption for 10 gig ethernet is still a bit slow, at this price point, I was kind of hoping to see a 10 gig connector, but 2.5 is still way better than one. We really need more users to request 10 gig ethernet as one of their key buying points, but considering five years have passed since an initial push into the consumer retail market with no traction for consumer adoption, uh, I guess if you've got gigabit, it's good enough, right? Oh well. Um, one small nitpick with the X570 ACE would be a slightly longer than normal BIOS startup when changing overclocking values. It's nothing excessive, uh, just a little bit more than normal. Thanks again go to MSI for the gear we have, which allowed us to do some head-to-head -head testing we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. And Corsair, especially for their H150i Pro, which kept temps down and really allowed the Ryzen 3900X and Intel 9900K to perform to their best. And if you're thinking about getting started with Ryzen 9, there are always other options out there. Even MSI's own line has an X570A Pro for $160 and X570 Gaming Plus for $170, still both decent contenders. If you're considering the jump to Ryzen, we'd like to hear your thoughts and questions down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you found this video helpful. To see more videos like this, please do subscribe for new content and be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We always check the comments and we do respond to most. So if you have a question or if we miss something, then please tell us down there and let us know what you'd like to see next. We really appreciate you watching this far. Thanks for your time and we'll see you on the next. Bye for now.